So now we're going to look at the next part of, the, of this presentation slash video, and that is reflection. And this is an important word. So you've done your marking process. That could maybe take you 10 minutes, 20 minutes, 30 minutes. You make your corrections. That's important. But this is where the process gets a little bit longer. And that's the reflection. And the first part is that on the question that you only get wrong, um, even if it is one mark, you meant to do find a similar question from the textbook exercise. So you know, many of you guys may ask me, um, so in the previous video, so if you guys haven't checked that video out, the Corbett Maths video, and how to use Corbett Maths after you use Seneca, why are we not using the textbook exercise? Why are we using only the exam style questions, the practice questions, but this is where the textbook exercise comes into play. So you get a question wrong, you know the topic of the question, you got it wrong. And then if you got, say, a question wrong in straight line graphs, there's also, so you got it wrong after you've done the exam style questions. So what do you do? You go and use the straight line graphs textbook exercise, take the information from there. Um, there's similar questions in the textbook as well. You can, don't have to just use the Corbett Maths one. There are so many other textbooks. And if you would like, I can put like a whole list of the best text textbooks um, at the end of my screen um, in the um, description I mean so you can check that out in there as well but finding a similar question and doing it is where it matters and if you can't find a similar question on the textbook you can redo the question that you got wrong that's another thing that I urge you but when you do redo a question um, you do it on another paper by covering the question up and by not cheating so what what I mean by not cheating is a lot of students just basically look at what the mistakes they made, just literally copy and paste it and say that they've done the question. Cover the question up, put it somewhere else, maybe do it 10, 30 minutes later because you might remember the answer. Then do a question or you can even edit the question yourself, put a few different numbers instead of the numbers that are there. And so if it said like uh, something like... Um, um, coordinates 1, 2, you can change it to coordinates 4, 5 and it translated or something like it, it reflected on the x-axis, um, you know it, it's the difference if, it's, if you change the numbers that are there, do you understand what I mean? So you don't have to have the same question, try it with different numbers and you should be able to work the answer out. That's important, do not cheat yourself, at the end of the day it's you that is losing. It's all about you, this is where the mentality comes into play, check that video out, it's very very important. But um, doing another paper on another paper so do not do it on the same exam paper because you literally can see the question and cover it up using a paper and write it on your, t on your notebook or in your um, book course on your piece of paper or in your notes somewhere but do not um, cheat cover the question up do the question not cover the question up cover your answers and your mark scheme up um, and answer it so that you'll be able to answer the question. So not covering the question up, I made a grammatical error there, but covering the answers. So you know what I mean by covering the question up so you only can see the question and not the answers and the mark scheme and then you redo that question. That's very important because you can just simply just look at the, the answers and look at your own answer and literally copy and paste it and then you think that you revised, you think that you learned, but at the end of the day it wasn't something that I recommend as learnings. It's pretty much just cheating yourself. So it's something that is important and if you still get the question wrong keep learning understanding and doing the question again so you say you do it again and you still get it wrong that means the learning process hasn't happened so what you do is you go and check out other learning videos so if you want i can do more and more um, videos on how which videos websites you could use to learn which are useful to understand you can go back to seneca learning so you haven't checked out the seneca learning video that's a very very good video uh, not good video um like the video that I explained using Seneca is a very good video, but using Seneca as a tool to get a grain and GCC maps, a secret tool that not a lot of students know about, is another video that I recommend to a large extent. Do check that video out. It is very, very important. They're all at the top of your screen. If you click the I button, it should show all the cards that are there so that I'll be able to put five cards. So I'll put five of the important cards that I recommend and you guys could check those videos out. So use these devices, use these websites, use these opportunities to do the question again and do a similar question if you find one in another textbook exercise, somewhere else, something else, something that is similar to the question you've just done. And if you get that question right, then you've learnt, you have learnt the process. Also in Seneca Learning, there's exam questions for you guys to do. Do that there as well. There should be a similar question because at the end of the day, the exam AQA or Edexo or OCR, they're not going to find another exam paper. They can only be within your specification. So a question like that will be available um, in your um, exam. And at the end of the day, it's, 
a specification. This is the boundary for the uh, exam boards to ask you questions on. That's why a lot of teachers make predicted papers because they know pretty much what it's going to be like. Um, the exam papers can't do anything different. The teachers can make their own exam papers. The students can make their own exam papers. So the device, the resources are literally completely there. You don't even have to pay for resources. They're literally there. A lot of good ones for free. So use those and learn and understand and do those questions again. But if you're still struggling to ask your teacher, um, struggling with the question, you can ask your teacher, you can go to your tutor, you can go to your friend for help. Do that. Don't be like, oh, it's not coming to my head. I won't be able to survive. I can't do this. It's too difficult for me. I cannot do this. Um, just leave it. Just pray that the question doesn't come up. That's a lot of students. I hear that word. I pray that the question does not come up in the exam. And the first question that comes up is that question. So don't do that mistake. Don't have regrets. Um, struggling, ask your teacher, don't be ashamed. This is where the mentality video comes back into play. Don't use your teacher as much as possible. Check that video. It's a good, good video. Use them as much as possible. At the end of the day, you're looking at yourself. So these are the things that I recommend when it comes to doing these um, important things for reflection, learning, taking advice and acting upon it as quickly as po uh, possible. So looking at this reflection, so you get the question that you got wrong. Even if there's one more, you can see the questions that you got wrong. Do a similar question from a textbook exercise. If you can't find a similar question or the textbook exercise, redo the question that you got wrong. Do it on another paper by covering the question up and not cheating. So you cover the answers up so that you can only see the question and do not cheat yourself. By just by You can cover it up with a piece of paper and then you just lift the paper and then you quickly just look at that and jot it. I see a lot of students doing that. Don't do that sort of things. You're cheating yourself at the end of the day. Do it on another paper by covering the question up and by not cheating. That's what I just mentioned. Even if you get the question wrong, keep learning, understanding and doing the question again. That's the learning process. That is what learning is. You keep trying, 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 trying until you get something right. If you can change something that was wrong, right, you have learnt it. If you cannot swim, if you couldn't swim, but you now can swim, you, you've learnt it. That's what learning is. That's important. That's the way you can get the most out of using exam papers. Um, I've teach, taught you guys how to use the exam paper, what to exactly do when you're doing an exam paper, and then how to reflect on it, how to use the marking system, use the marking scheme, and use the marking trips and techniques to get a grade 9 in GCS maths. And that's where the difference is. Um, the grade 9 students reflect. They always think, oh, why did I lose this one mark? Why did I lose this 10 marks? Why did I lose this 5 marks? Why did I miss this question? They want to know why, and they want to get that, prevent that happening. That's what they do. The grade 9 students do not like to get things wrong. So they keep rev revising, keep learning until they get those things right. That's the way it is. And you, and what your option is, you don't have to be the best student. Because the best student that gets a grade 9 and someone that was literally just one mark into the grade 9 boundary, they both still get grade 9 at the end of the day. So you don't need to be the best student. You don't need to get 100%. That's not the aim. The aim is to be at the top of the others. And if you can get into that boundary for a grade nine, you've got a grade nine. I wasn't say I wouldn't say that I would I was the smartest student, but I've got a grade nine. There were students than me that used to get hundred percent every exam. I could have I was one of those students, but um I've seen students that do not really care. I do not mind about getting one mistake or getting two mistakes. That's not the problem. The problem is that you have to be ahead of the other students. If you get that one mistake and get that two mistake, but if your friends, if your other students get that one mistake, two mistake, it doesn't matter. But if you get a mistake where your friends got that right and your other students got that right, that's where the problem lies. That means you're one below those students. So you have to be ahead of them. So you have to get those questions right. That's why a lot of students, teachers say, oh, do all the grade five questions first, get all the grade four questions uh, done and dusted because that's where you can at least get a grade five then do the grade six questions then do the grade seven questions then do the grade eight questions they keep moving up and up and up and then you'll be able to get grade nine that's the way to do it but when it comes to exam papers looking specifically at it you do an exam paper it's the best thing it's the, one of the best revision resources because you do an exam paper and if you do not do any you don't have a revision guide you don't have nothing and you literally just do an exam paper nothing else in your hand just do an exam paper completely just trusting your knowledge with no other help at all you do an exam paper and you get literally 40 percent out of the whole exam you get literally most of it wrong you only get 40 percent right but that 60 percent you 40 percent you got right you know that you know those topics the 60 percent you got wrong is what you got to work on so you don't have to waste your time working on the things that you already know you only have to work on the things that you got wrong and that's where you use this video to learn 
um, you reflect on it, the tricks that I teach you in this reflection video, the tricks that I teach you in how to mark a video, the tricks that I teach you in doing the paper itself, um, it's important and it should help you get a grade 9 in GCSE Maths. So, as you can tell from the how to use exam papers um, to get a grade 9 maths in GCSE Maths video, um, if you enjoyed that video, we're going to now change to another video in terms of a new video that I'm going to upload, which is the best websites to use to get a grade 9 in GCSE Maths. Some of the video, some of the websites I've already hinted, such as Seneca Learning, Corporate Maths, but there are some other few ones that I recommend to use. So there will be a whole video on this explaining the best ones to use, so you don't have to waste your time looking at which website to use, which website to use. The certain amount of websites that I believe that you just need to get a grade 9 to get a GCSE Maths, I will show those 5 websites or 6 websites or the 7 websites or those 10 websites that I believe is good enough to get a grade 9 in GCSE Maths. Don't have to spend time searching, researching, I'm doing all that work for you. I've had the experience of teaching students, I have the experience of um, doing it myself and which ones I found valuable, which ones I found useful, which ones I actually used to get a grade 9 in GCSE Maths. So this will be the video, so that will be on your screen, that has been on your screen um, all this time. Um, so enjoy this video um, and I would urge you to watch the video on the screen because that's an important video if you enjoyed this one and you will enjoy this one to get a grade 9 in GCSE Maths, I highly recommend it. So do click, check it out, so if you want to take a break, pause the video, then click on it later, or save the, click on the video and click it here, watch later, but check this video out. Thank you for watching.